Brian Beeler here from storageview.com, and we are deep inside the labs in HPE's Spring, Texas facility. We've been here before, love working with these guys, and this time, it's a bit of a blast from the past. We're working with HPE SimpliVity. HP SimpliVity has always been known as a great HCI solution, typically with VMware, right? They go together hand in glove. With all the challenges in the industry, though, HPE made an aggressive decision to acquire a company called Morpheus. What they've done is taken the HPE Morpheus VM Essential software and paired it with SimpliVity to give customers choice when they're deploying these solutions at the edge and at smaller locations. I'm looking at five of these engineering sample systems right now. You only need two of these nodes to put together a SimpliVity cluster. Even though we're gonna walk through VM Essentials and cover off on the backup and how VM imports work and all those other things happen, we still can't get past hardware. We love hardware. That's why I'm sitting here in front of this development cluster, because the last time we took a look at SimpliVity, and admittedly, it's been some time, they used to have an FPGA accelerator in the systems, which made deployments a little more complicated. But back in those days, the x86 architecture wasn't able to handle what SimpliVity at the time and now HPE needs out of the system. One of those big things is compression and deduplication. They're seeing 10 to one on these systems. This cluster down here, just those two, is a two node high availability SimpliVity cluster. They've got a Linux arbiter or like a witness that sits between these to make sure the data is in sync. And that arbiter can sit just about anywhere so long as you meet the latency requirements that it uh, needs to keep these nodes in sync. Now, as we scale up, as we go to three nodes or four nodes in a cluster, you don't need that arbiter anymore, but still the deployment's the same. It just means that these can get really small, obviously to you for the two nodes, and not have much complexity, which is uh, critical at the edge. The other great thing about what HP is doing is they're putting this together in a single SKU. So you can get the SimpliVity, you can get the VM Essentials, and the fabric, all of it to go together in one converged architecture. What does that mean for the end user? It means that you've got one point of contact for support for the entire thing. So our focus is going to be on the SimpliVity nodes, getting up to speed on what's new in the hardware and architecture there, taking a look at what VM Essentials means when paired with SimpliVity. But you should know that even though these solutions are relatively small for the SMB, Robo, Retail, Edge locations, the same benefits of VM Essentials apply as you go further up the stack. The point being is that even if you start small here and maximize your SimpliVity cluster at one point in time, there's a nice migration path to DHCI that might be a better solution as that gets larger. Let's get one of these guys out and take a look at what the hardware is like. As I said in the intro, there's lots of new stuff going on with not just SimpliVity hardware, but the integration with VM Essentials. And so I brought my friend Matt in. Now, last time we were here, we were talking about, what was it, B10,000 uh, storage. MP, yeah. yeah. That was pretty wild, and that product continues to do really well for you. Yes, yes. And now we're back with SimpliVity, which is something that I haven't seen in quite some time. Existing SimpliVity customers have been putting VMware to work for years, and that doesn't really change here. What's new is the offering of VM Essentials. So that's the big one. Um, we know um, as we look to be very cost optimized and price efficient for our customers, um, the VM Essentials software allows us to do that. So you get all the necessary hypervisor needs from that VS VM Essentials software, but then you have the beauty of SimpliVity on top of that. How are we getting VMs from an existing environment into VM Essentials? Um, we have integrated tools for migration directly from vCenter. You know, okay. back in the day we used to P to V or physical yeah, to yeah. virtual. Now we're V to V, virtual to virtual, and we can do that directly from uh, the uh, VM Essentials manager. Okay, so that makes it simple to get in. Then from an administration standpoint, what, what's special for uh, VME there? What stands out? A lot of customers who knew uh, SimpliVity with vCenter loved it because it was all right-click actions. You manage the whole environment from within vCenter. We didn't change that. So okay. we manage the whole environment from a SimpliVity standpoint or from a VME standpoint. It's managed directly within that VME manager. So you don't need managers of managers, just a consistent single plane of glass, single dashboard for everything, including your backups to easily manage your virtualized environment. Okay, and let's talk about the backups too, because I know Kevin started to play around with this in our lab a little bit. And one of the really interesting things about VM uh, Essentials is the integration with backup. Talk about that and why that's important to customers. So there's a few reasons. One, it is, it's full backups. So every time you make a backup, it's a full backup. It's mm -hmm. not a snapshot as a lot of hypervisors use. It's an actual backup. 
So if your machine gets deleted, you lose data, you can restore from that backup, create a new VM. But think of the implications, the fact that within seconds or even minutes, depending on the size of the VM, I can restore that. So if I'm hit by ransomware, near instantaneous restore. If I'm hit by data loss, need to restore files, or even just clone a VM, mm -hmm. it happens. It can happen in such a reduced time because of how efficient we are with how we manage the data. With SimpliVity, we've always had kind of what we call the hyper guarantee, 10 to one uh, deduplication and, and efficiency ratio with dedupe and compression. Um, that includes with the backups because we manage the backups, we include those in our efficiency. Mm -hmm. So with virtualized environments, most of your data is dedupable data, it's redundant data. So we can get rid of a lot of that redundant data. We don't have to write it if it doesn't need to be written. Um, and then we compress, we squeeze everything Everything we can out of everything else so that it's efficient and we don't do it as an afterthought like a lot of our competitors it's done in line before the data is even written yeah it seems like that was such a popular thing in arrays in a lot of different technologies over the years but every time you know we took a, a serious look at it the problem has always been that it's just so heavy mm -hmm. that, it, that it made it really hard to do. Yeah, so the thing about SimpliVity is we have the SimpliVity file system. So it's not going to be um, some of your standard file systems that you're used to. It's native to SimpliVity, and we've architected it to be efficient. That way we can take advantage of, of some of what you called were heavy technologies. Right. Okay, so as we think about where these are going to be, edge, retail, hard to get to, remote locations are really popular. But what is the the stack do in terms of letting you take a bunch of disparate locations and roll that back to a core data center you know the old hub and spoke as it were back in the day is there something special there that can happen yeah so remember as as we dedupe um, the cool thing is, is SimpliVity has what we call a federation construct. Right. So within that federation, it's all aware of the data within that federation. So if you have multiple edge sites and you need to back them up to a core site, it can dedupe against from the edge to the core. And then it writes the data compressed as well. So again, your data transit, you're, you're copying instead of gigabytes of data, you're mm -hmm. copying megabytes or kilobytes of data because of how efficient we can be. Well, which is actually really good for uh, bandwidth uh, restricted spots, you know, someone that's on a satellite connection or something where pushing kilobytes or megabytes is a lot different than mm -hmm. you know, large chunks of data, right? Exactly. Think of cruise ships, oil platforms, uh, even remote environments. So the three principles SimpliVity was always built on, being easy to use and manage. So singular console to manage everything. Being hyper efficient with the backup. So doing a backup and then also a little bit of resiliency, uh, maybe even have us pull a plug and show that within two nodes, the other node comes right up. So okay. being hyper-efficient, being very simple to use, and being very resilient. That sounds like a great instruction set for Kevin and the team back in the lab to get hands-on with the system and get a feel for how it works, how it fails, how it recovers. So we'll explore that and be back with a deep dive on the GUI and how VME comes together in tandem with SimpliVity. You came into this not knowing VM Essentials at all, really. Yeah. You came in dry. I started the process knowing a little bit about Morpheus and what they were doing, but not having the full picture. What's your number one takeaway after seeing it, using it, and, and being in VM Essentials for a couple weeks? It's easy, and it looks at or above the fit and finish of what you'd expect from VMware, which is a lot from something where it's a, not necessarily an entry value prop, but it's a, right. their pricing could effectively be free compared to where VMware is currently positioned. Well, I think when you buy it, and I don't know that they want us to lead with this, but I think they'll probably just give you the license for VME, but even if you bought VME, on ProLiant, it's very inexpensive. It's like 600 a socket or something like well, that. Yeah, which puts in the realm of things like Proxbox, which you interact with that. Yes, you get a lot of functionality, but it does not look anywhere near the level of fit and finish you're going to find from VME. That ease of use where you can log into it kind of from that dry setting where you have no idea what's going on and you just start kind of poking around where you're like, hey, it takes maybe a minute uh, to get a VM up and running or hey, I built it out and I get to see that backup option from the same pane of glass in that same area on the VM itself, where if you're on the uh, VMware Proxmox side, you're drilling through other menus or through an entire different system to see where that is. VME, it's all integrated into that single, uh, single environment. So backups uh, from just the standpoint of you're making your VM and you get to apply that policy uh, through that process, it's like a one or two clicks through those same menus and you have backup enabled and it's it's protecting your VM from the start. Yeah, uh, so it's not like you make the VM and then go back later and apply a backup policy. It's integral to that process. Yes, yeah, you can still add policies after the fact, right? but it's something where 
you get into a flow where you don't have to worry about missing a step because it's through a completely separate menu. And I would point out that I just said, you know, lack of IT staff at the edge, even if you have IT staff, like automating or, or flowizing some of that stuff so that you're getting back up in there. Because the, you know, the reality is, is that where these are going, retail, maybe physicians' offices, those are prime targets for ransomware, as we well know. So getting that back up and integrated into that process is key. Yeah, and once it's, uh, once it's up and running, let's say your backup profile runs nightly, for example, you can kick off backups beforehand from your same little interface looking at the VM. Okay, so backups, inbuilt backups is your number one thing that you enjoyed. What's the number two? Second, I think, works for that edge deployment where you may not have the expertise that knows a, let's see, you're, uh, you have the expertise at the edge where someone might be deploying additional VMs, but doesn't really know uh, how many vCPUs should be in there, how much oh, RAM. Okay. So the, the resource allocations. Yeah, you can create flavors of how those VMs are set up where it's not really a template because a template implies where you already have pre-built VMs and you're just rolling with that uh, particular configuration okay. time after time. This is a, say you have a light workload versus a heavy workload, you can predefine how many vCPUs, how much RAM, how much storage space should be allowed for a given user to, uh, to make VMs with. Or okay. you can do it from the standpoint of you've uh, uploaded ISOs into your environments and when the user selects that particular ISO, it'll automatically filter down the list into the supported flavors for it. Right now, they got that part nailed where it's the simplicity first, mm -hmm. where some of the other vendors, they might have gone more of the technical support feature uh, route first, and it didn't make it any easier to use or deploy. This is very simple to deploy, and any growth it has is really getting into more complex or advanced scenarios. This stack has tremendous runway into the future, both on the software side and on the ProLiant side, and as HP continues to integrate those things, I mean, the, the upside potential for SimpliVity and, and VM Essentials is, is extraordinarily high. But I think what we're seeing at HP right now is the realization that they've got phenomenal assets within the company, and why not piece these things together, especially in a time of turmoil with Broadcom's licensing being challenging for most SMBs and edge users where these SimpliVity with VME devices are going. And man, they've done a wonderful job. Yeah, I mean, right now you could almost find the hardware plus VME licenses at a lower cost than a VMware renewal. Yeah, which is, which is mind boggling to say the least. So HPE will continue to have the hundreds, thousands of customers that remain on, on VMware and ESXi, and that's fine, but this solution is really designed for those smaller use cases that we've identified. And as Kevin's iterated, and as we covered in detail in the paper, it's the usability and the integration that is so key here. Yeah, it's fantastic. So check out the paper. Like I said, we've got that linked in the description below. We'll also link to HPE's page with SimpliVity and VME you, so you can learn more there. But I strongly encourage you, they've got POCs. If you're looking at deployments that are a little bit smaller, but you still want the hypervisor, you want the simplicity, you want the unification and support that HPE brings to the table with this product, it's worth checking out and you would do yourself a tremendous favor by considering this as part of your next tech refresh.